I'm Chris, I'm a visual anthropologist here at CUT. The story we wanted to tell in this video is about the last 100 years of American tattoos. So we worked with Casey, who is our model, um, a very brave and strong woman. And we worked with Clay, our tattoo artist, who is also something of a historian. So he has an incredible knowledge of the history of tattooing. My name's Clay Welch. I'm a tattooer in the Pacific Northwest. I've been tattooing roughly 20 years. Uh, I got my start in 1995. Clay curated a bunch of tattoos that Casey chose from. She chose a look from every decade that was iconic of one tattoo master at the time. For 1910, we chose Charlie Wagner. He's really one of the originators and forefathers of tattooing. Somewhat booming time for tattooing. It was, it was the beginning of it. The uh, majority of the tattooing done during that time was black and gray. For the 1920s, we chose Amon Dietzel. Amon's art style was definitely different. It was beautiful and quite colorful. We went with this piece because it seems to be one of the more popular images when thinking about Amon Dietzel's work. For the 1930s, we chose Cap Coleman. For Coleman, we chose a hand holding a little bundle of flowers, which is similar to something we found on one of his sheets of flash. Paul Rogers, we chose for him a small clipper ship. The way that he illustrated the hull of the boat was quite a bit more round and robust, gave it a, a very cool look. For the 50s, we chose Norman Collins, or Sailor Jerry. He is probably one of the more iconic tattoo artists that have come along in history. During the 1950s, Jerry had developed his own style. He had created one of the first needles that we use for shading. We chose an owl for Sailor Jerry, and many people do know that little owl, so it is a recognizable piece. For the 60s, we chose Lyle Tuttle. He tattooed in San Francisco. He did a tattoo on Janis Joplin's wrist that had been photographed for the cover of Rolling Stone. After Janis's tattoo, he says that women's liberation really changed the face of his tattooing, and he tattooed girls for almost three years straight. For 1970, we chose Ed Hardy, who we likely could have just done the rest of this on from 1950 or so on. He is probably one of the most influential uh, purveyors of tattooing even up to now. Ed was one of the first to really take traditional tattoo imagery and just tie it all together. Casey had chose a mermaid off of one of Ed Hardy's flash sheets. She enjoyed that piece the most. She thought that could be something that she would like to wear. For the 80s, we chose Mike Rollo Malone. He was most known for his machine work and also for taking over Sailor Jerry's Smith Street Tattoo Studio. For the 90s, we did Guy Acheson. He's definitely a master of his own thing, a more surreal direction. So replicating Guy's work was difficult to say the least. For 2000s, we chose Jack Rudy. Jack's fine line detail using the single needle really changed what that tattoo would look like. For Casey, we did a, a Jolly Roger, but it's one of Jack's pieces. For 2010, we chose the artist Nico Hurtado. His color portrait work is the new thing that we see more often for a change in the time. We chose a color portrait of a cat, the model's cat, into something that would be like what Nico would do, giving it a, a slight illustrative look too. I think people get tattooed to take possession of their own body. Tattooing stayed taboo all the way up until the 90s. Over the last century, a history of counterculture, uh, women's liberation, have made it less and less taboo for us to get tattoos and to wear them openly. Um, Mattel even released a Barbie doll with tattoos. So some controversy, but the fact that this could happen now says that I think we're socially more accepting about the choices people make to their own bodies and the autonomy they have over them. Make sure to subscribe to cut then like us on Facebook leave a note in the comment box below so you